once you montage your element maps, we can then start to work on extracting the data that we really want from this element map data. The data itself is a data cube, so if we zoom in, we can see individual pixels. Um, and in the third dimension, we can see that there is a spectrum, basically. So if I click on a pixel, I get a spectrum, and we can see there's a spectrum going off in Z direction. We have the option to extract the elements that we want from that data cube. So in, in element mapping, all elements are essentially acquired. If they're present, they will show up in the spectra. But it's up to the person who is processing the data to decide which elements are actually real, which, which elements are actually present in the sample, and which ones might be being erroneously identified from the auto ID in the software, which just looks for bumps in the in the background of the of the spectrum. So in this case, terbium is something which I know in this sample is not present at detection limits uh, that EDS can pick up. So by double clicking that I can exclude it or I can click on it and press exclude. Cesium is another one. I'm going to press control and, and remove some of these elements. Platinum will exclude. I'm going to include, this is a silicate rock, so I'm going to include phosphorus. I think that's probably present, so I double click that and it's added phosphorus. It's telling me it's overlapping with the gold window, which could be a problem. And we'll have manganese, chromium, possibly sulfur. So I'll include those elements. Once you're happy with the element list that you have selected, then what we need to do is to press true map. And by pressing true map, the data changes from being yellow to from red to yellow, sorry. And you can see the data is now processing as it goes. What's actually happening when you press true map is that the software is modeling the background of, of each pixel, of the spectrum in each pixel. It's modeling this background, it's subtracting it from the peaks, and then it's also dealing with any overlaps that exist from the elements that we selected. So for example, phosphorus, which has an energy around about two kilo electron volts for the X-ray peak for phosphorus, has an overlap with gold at around about the same energy. So the software will mathematically deconvolve any overlapping peaks. So by pressing true map, we're making sure that we're dealing with absolute concentrations above background and that we've dealt with any overlapping peaks. So it's really important that you do this step before you do any other processing of element maps.